Colombia is really an enigma. Um, the country is, is wonderful in many ways. It's a beautiful country and uh, culturally it's incredibly diverse and, and it's very rich in cultural terms. Um, there are obviously many, many wonderful people there. Um, and yet it has this, this internal war. When I first got to, to the country, it was in 1995, and I was invited to give a workshop um, to a group of largely Colombian photographers, um, most of them from small newspapers in areas of the country most affected by the war. Um, and looking at their work, um, I realized that I didn't know anything about this conflict. I had no idea of the scale of it. I had no idea how um, terrible its effects are on the civilian population. I think I probably just had the kind of vague idea that, that most people have that this has to do with drugs. Um, and in fact, the story is way more complicated and uh, has a lot less to do with drugs than, than people think. I didn't know at the time that Colombia has the second largest population of internally displaced people in the world, which is after Sudan. Um, by official numbers, there are over three and a half million people who have been forced from their homes by, by the war. So my goals were, were pretty straightforward. One is to show that this is going on. Um, the other being to get past this idea that this is just a drug war you know, and really bring out some of the complexity of, of the story. And the other goal, which has been really important to me, has been to show the role of Colombian civilians who oppose the violence, um, many of them working at great risk to their own lives. Um, these are journalists. Uh, trade unionists, peasant leaders, human rights defenders, uh, community organizers. Um, these are people who I've met over the course of the years and uh, who I admire a great deal. I call this work Violentology in honor of the great school of Colombian historians and sociologists known as the Violentologists, who studied the mid-20th century civil war known as the violence. Those same scholars were excellent uh, collectors of, of photographs and as they were studying the violence in the countryside in the mid-20th century, uh, they collected a set of images that they then used in the Colombian Congress to denounce the atrocities that were taking place. The book is printed on a heavy paper that references newspaper and you have to hold it. It's large. Um, it's a little bit difficult to handle, like the conflict itself. Um, and graphically, the design references the practice of journalism, print journalism. The book is actually printed on a rotary press, a traditional newspaper press, uh, which is used by El Espectador, uh, which is a legendary newspaper in Bogota. Uh, it became world famous as um, a symbol of resistance to the violence because uh, Pablo Escobar first uh, assassinated the director of the newspaper um, and he also blew up the newspaper um, and they continued to, to go to, pr to, to print. It's not an act of nostalgia exactly, it's an attempt to 
use the, the physical tactile qualities of, of paper uh, to grab the reader's attention. Um, I want to mobilize people's attention through their sense of touch and not just through the sense of sight. Um, so all these things went into, into the design. If there's anywhere in the world, I think, where human rights um, is really at stake and where all sides are, are uh, guilty of, of committing constant human rights violations, it's in Colombia. Um, at the same time, it's a country that has this uh, democratic tradition, it has a very strong judiciary, it has a, a very brave and, and, and often excellent press corps. So if there's you know, a fundamental struggle there, it's a struggle between people who, who want to create a more peaceful society, a more just society, and all these different violent actors. And, and that could be the story of the whole world in, in a lot of ways.